What's up Deep Divers? Welcome back to Studio Deep Dive. My name is Kyle and today we're going to build a stand for my new reef tank. Let's get at it. What's happening Deep Divers? Welcome back to the wood shop. Today we are building a reef tank stand for my new innovative marine 25 gallon reef tank. I am currently just building the frame within which I am using uh, Craig Jag to make all of my fastening points. The reason I'm doing that is because I have to make every effort possible for this thing to be very strong. Even though it's just a little 25 gallon tank, 25 gallons of water weighs just shy of 300 pounds and that's not including any live rock and all the filtration media and everything else that I'm going to be putting in the tank. So we are going to make two square frames that will serve to be the top and bottom parts of the inner skeleton, let's say, uh, of the stand. Here you see I am fastening the upright pieces to the bottom of the two squares, and that's because I am soon going to be flipping this thing over and letting that other frame I'm not drilling slide right to the bottom, like so. Once I had fastened that, I then started putting interior supports so that the weight of the tank and everything else isn't just sitting on top of the screws, but rather is sitting on top of wood, making it much stronger. Once I was done with the frame, I set about cutting up pieces of plywood so that I could do the sides, top, and eventually the door. I fastened the first bit and I wanted to see what the routing would look like uh, before continuing on with everything else. So I took my new router piece, threw it onto the rigid and ran a couple lines just to make sure I was gonna like the way it looked. You will notice throughout this video that I'm more or less exclusively using rigid tools. I am not sponsored by them, although if they're watching, I'd be happy to be sponsored by them because I love their tools. Uh, but really it's because I don't wanna have to buy a bunch of different batteries. I just have two rigid batteries that I switch off between for everything that isn't a uh, corded tool like this router is in particular. Look at that sawdust fly. The routing is a really cool way just to add an upgrade to the aesthetic of your particular creation without having to do a whole lot of work. I mean, I'm really just running this over once on every side and immediately it makes the thing look way cooler. I can't recommend enough that you put some sort of finished edge on it. So once I had all the sides attached and routed out, I flipped the thing right side up and started measuring for what would be a very wonky shaped interior floor. I needed this because I'm gonna end up wanting to seal the inside just in case any water spilled out within there. I cut the floor out and popped it in and now I'm just gonna throw some finishing nails in there to keep him fastened down. And there's some more rigid stuff. It's, there's my one of two batteries. Look at them fly. Once I had finished fastening the bottom, I then went ahead and worked on the cutout side that was gonna eventually have a door attached to it. Ooh, someone's topless. Hello, you're all welcome. Also, I'm very sorry. I know it's disturbing. But all jokes aside, uh, you can see that I'm just putting in one nail at a time and that's just because I'm making sure that all the edges are lined up before I completely fasten any one side. I have a very strong aversion to things put on crooked. Once I had all the sides, including the door frame side put on, I started sanding and then I kept sanding and I sanded some more and some more and some more. Felt like there was a ridiculous amount of sanding for this, but I really wanted to have a clean look and was planning on using some acetone after this to clean the wood off before applying some uh, finish, uh, in particular a stain and then a polyurethane 
but I really wanted to make sure that this was very smooth all the way around. So I went as far as using belt sanders where needed, largely just this orbital sander, and then I even did some hand sanding. When it came to the hand sanding part and the finishing part, I ended up actually inviting my buddy Colin over to help me out because there was just so much to do and I didn't want to have to do it by myself. He's always down for a good project. But before we get to the finish, let's take a look on the inside. This is a close up of the floor and you'll see I'm taping both top and bottom sides. That's because I am soon to be running a bead of silicone all the way around the bottom edge, just in the event that while refilling my auto top off, which will be a five gallon aquarium in on that left side there, uh, or water somehow getting out of the tank and in the stand, you never know. I just, I want it to be as watertight as possible so that I don't have any damage if something spills. Taped her all the way around, took a hot minute, but take the time. It is worth putting on clean lines of tape. That way you can really glob this stuff on thick, smear it into the creek cracks and make sure that everything is nice and watertight. You'll see that I am actually using a commercial grade silicone uh, left over from my days as a commercial kitchen designer and installer. You can just as easily use the GE Silicone 2. That stuff is great and I've used it in many other products or projects in which I needed to have things watertight. Here's a good look at what the router looked like. Had a very simple rounded off edge, but I think it made it look a little classier than it would have otherwise. And just doing a couple shots over, you can see that I put a few cross braces on the top just for added rigidity and structural integrity. I then took the belt sander because a couple of them were uneven at the top and I really wanted to make sure I had a level surface. Even though the Innovative Marine Lagoon, there's my buddy Colin's hand, look at him go. Even though the lagoon has this little self-leveling pad, it's about maybe 3 sixteenths to a quarter of an inch thick foam on the bottom of the tank, I really wanted to do everything I could to make sure that this thing was gonna be level beforehand. Once we finished sanding, we put some acetone on some rags and started wiping down every surface and then adding stain. You will note that Colin doesn't wear gloves. Wear gloves, people. I, I can't recommend enough that you wear gloves because his hands were stained for a good week. So he's the rebel, it, it happens, but honestly, wear gloves. Uh, here you'll see I'm using the polyurethane. Once the stain had dried, I started adding coats of polyurethane, not only to protect it against the water, but to give it a nice shiny finish. I think I used a semi-gloss finish to be specific, but I honestly don't remember. Because this is a reef tank stand, I wanted to make sure that the waterproof part of it would be very effective. Uh, you can actually see that five gallon tank, that's where my auto top off is, and that is the power supply to my tank controller. Here I'm showing a little bit of how I started the tank up. Those rocks were actually sitting in that tub for three months while I was curing them. They have since finished that, and I am using that quickcrete uh, to put them together in what ended up being my rockscape. You also may have noticed that there was a pink light coming from inside of the stand. It's because I lined the whole thing with LEDs just so I could see in there, but also so that it would look super dope. So there's my tank before I put anything in it. And here are a couple shots of what it looked like once I actually added some livestock. I didn't take any video of this. I only have some pictures and then a couple shots of my clowns that are in there. There's some pulsing Xenia and some hammer coral in the back. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I know I kind of ended it pretty quickly, but I just wanted to give you a better look at how to build this reef tank stand. It is a very simple process and I can't recommend it enough for anybody who is looking to add a personal touch 
to either the fresh or saltwater aquariums. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I read every single comment on my videos and I respond to every one that merits a response. Please like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more videos. Thanks guys.